Okay, we'll call the second meeting to order at 6 p.m. And we said the pledge. Should we do, do we do the pledge again? Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's on the agenda. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call. Brad Crandall? Here. John Courtney? Here. Sarah Jones? Here. Crystal Newman? Here. Jennifer Sheldon? Here. Tim Wood? Here. Okay. Public comments? I have Katrina Benson. <laughs> right away. Right. Oh, hi, everybody. Hello. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit tonight. Our family is struggling with school of choice right now. Um, we very much want to stay in Quincy, but I'm not sure it's a good fit for our family anymore. Um, so I just wanted to kind of list those reasons out because I'm sure if it's affecting us, then it's probably affecting other people too. Um, I just want to say we love the staff everywhere. <laughs> the staff is the strong part of the of the schools, basically. Um, most of our issues are with Dunlap. Um, I have a daughter in Dunlap and I have a daughter in Purdy. Um, I am concerned about class size <laughs> is a big thing. Um, she is going into fourth grade. A fourth grade teacher just got let go <laughs> from my very unscientific method of counting all the kids in the yearbook divided by the teachers. We're looking at 30 kids in a class. And that's an awful lot of kids. She had 27 this year. So it's a lot of kids for one teacher to handle, I think. Um, another thing, art. There is no art <laughs> in Dunlap. And I think it's very important for kids of that age, actually for everybody, we'll just blanket everybody, to have some sort of art education. It is her favorite subject. Some kids need that gym, that recess time. She needs her art time, her time to doodle, to draw, that type of thing and she doesn't have that opportunity um air conditioning is another one <laughs> she was in the classroom that backs up to the kitchen last year so it was a hot hot classroom um i have heard that there is no air conditioning going into dunlap this summer i don't know if that's completely true but um i'm assuming since they're not working on it now that it is um it makes a big difference a class of 27 kids sitting in a hot classroom, it's hard for anybody to learn in that environment. So we have actually put in an application that have been accepted to Harp Creek. Talking to them, their air condition, their, their classrooms are a nice temperature to learn in. Their class size, they say is about 15, which is about half of what we are looking at next year. Um, they also learn Spanish, which I think is a big, bonus to learn a second language so i think if your numbers are down which i know they are those are some things to look at what are we offering the community we could have looked at battle creek central they could have gone to college for free you know <laughs> like that's a big boost for somebody to move to that district harper creek has all those things that we just not there's art class too i don't think i said that but she could have art class she could have air conditioning she could have maybe even 20 kids in her class i think would make a huge difference um so there are, some of the other school districts in the area are more competitive, at least on paper, <laughs> to Penfield right now, in our opinion. Um, what's making us sway towards staying is the girls and their friends. You know, it's that social aspect. They love their schools, they love their friends, they love the teachers, you know. Um, so it's something that we are wrestling with this summer and it's, it's gonna be a hard choice for us, quite honestly. Like just looking at it on paper, Harper Creek seems like the way to go, but then again, I don't want two disappointed little girls either, you know? <laughs> you don't want to break them up from all of their friends. So, that is just what our family is going through this summer. Um, I'm sure other people are kind of thinking those same things too. Um, so, thanks for your time. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Katrina, I'll follow up with you, okay? All right. All right. Okay, at this time we're going to interview candidates for the ba vacant board seat. Um, is there someone out with the other candidates? Well, I, I just want to make sure that they the other arrived. candidate here? I can go <laughs> up there? Well, yeah, we would prefer so they don't have, like, they're not privy to what the questions are before. Hey, 
Um, Rachel. 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 Sorry, I was going to say Katrina. <laughs> Okay. Shall we go ahead and get started yes. with Mr. Herbstra? Yeah. All right. Come on well, up. Come on forward. You've been through this process before, but we want to welcome you and appreciate your interest in serving the board. Um, we're just going to go ahead and start with the questions, and we'll be starting with Mr. Crandall and going through this. Okay. Hi, uh, Steve. Thanks for being here tonight. Uh, my question for you is uh, what contributions can you make to Penfield Schools? So I think uh, my biggest contribution, I work for the Valley Creek Police Department right now. I'm actually assigned to Lakeview as a school resource officer. Um, so. I've been assigned to that for three years, so I get to see, I've learned a lot of the inner workings of education uh, through that way. Um, the trauma that, you know, some of the students or children in the district go through in every district, right? You know, schools are a safe place, so putting those uh, resources in front of them to help them succeed because um, some of these, this is their school day is the most stable time of their whole entire 24-hour day. So, and, uh, you know, you notice towards the end of the school year, during breaks, you know, they start to get anxiety builds up and try to work with them to make sure they know they're, they're going to be okay. Um, so get those resources out there. Safety-wise, um, I think I can contribute tremendously to the safety aspect of the school district. Um, as far as just my experience with safety and security, and then I was just recently trained uh, through the Michigan Office of School Safety for threat assessment training. So we're in the middle of developing a crisis or a threat assessment team at uh, Lakeview. So, and that's basically a group of five, at least five people that would be involved in threat assessments for threats made against the school by students or parents. Um, and I'm able to, uh, train that basic class it's in the Air Force, so I'm certified to train that as well. So that would be a huge help. Thanks for coming out today. Um, how do you feel the school district can improve the academic achievement of students and the professional development of its staff? So uh, academic achievement of students, I mean, making sure they have the resources, the class, you know, the classes, like we just heard maybe art class and Dunlap, obviously or Spanish, getting all those classes in the curriculum so they can, the students that want to take those classes have the choice. Obviously, I don't know exactly all the inner workings, so I know it's probably not as simple as that, but, you know, offering those resources. And staff, as far as professional development, um, focus on what's needed at the time. I mean, what's important now, you know, and uh, focus on that and give them the tools also to succeed. Awesome. Thank you. All right, with that, um, what do you think are the challenges facing our district right now? Um, declining enrollment. Um, I think the biggest thing in this area is going to be that barricade advantage. I mean, that's a huge, huge thing to come over here. Um, you know, if people start out kindergarten and go all the way through, it's 100%. And from reading down through the list, I mean, even if it's just ninth through 12th grade, it's still 65% covered, which is a huge, huge cost. So I think we... You know, every school is going to have to be competitive with that. Okay. Um, if you were faced with a tough issue as a board member, such as raising taxes, cutting staff programs, what kind of data would you need to help you make your decision? Um, can you read that one more time just so I get it? Um, what kind of data would you need to help make your decision if you were faced with tough issues such as raising taxes, cutting staff, and programs? Um, obviously, number of students in the district, um, classroom sizes, um, you know, um, 
cost, you know, what's the cost difference between the cuts you're going to make or what you're going to keep. Um, obviously, sometimes those decisions aren't the easiest. Sometimes they have to be made. Sometimes there's other ways around that. So um, I think the most important ones, again, are just class size, their student sizes, um, and then cost associated with keeping or cutting. You're going to have to look at those three main uh, funds. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> um, what do you think are the most important skills for students to have when they graduate? Um, I think that what I notice is I think some of the students need skills to succeed in life. So to being taught to be on time, tardiness, um, respect when they go out in the, the world. Um, See now, I mean, where I'm at, a lot of kids show up late. Um, there's really no repercussions for it. And if you do that in a real workplace, you're, you're not gonna make it very long. So those would be my three biggest things is being on time, respect, and you know, just general rules of life, really. I mean, if that makes sense. Thank you for being here. Uh, what would you like to see changed in the district, and how do you envision your role in that change? Um, again, you know, my thing, uh, safety, I think I, I think we can really improve this district on safety. I think I can be a huge asset to that. Um, I don't really know a lot about the numbers or anything quite yet. So, I mean, obviously, if I get on the board, I would learn all that. So. I think safety-wise is where I'm going to be. My big would be my biggest asset for the board if I got picked. I can make a huge difference. Thank you. As a board member, you'll be asked to make decisions where you must put aside what's best for you, your family, your friends, and your and your school to do what's best for the students and district. What does this mean to you? I mean, yeah, some some decisions you have to make are tough, right? So, I mean, you got to make it, you got to look at the overall population, um, you know, the majority. Obviously, listen to the community input, gather input from uh, everybody, listen to the community input and makes what, make, make the best decision possible for the, the whole district and not just my personal beliefs or my family's beliefs or my friend's beliefs. So, you may make, you're going to make somebody mad at some point, so make the best decisions you think and move forward with it. What are your beliefs about the use of technology in education? Uh, technology, I think it's great. I mean, unfortunately, or not unfortunately, but that's the way the world is uh, leaning. Everything's done on a computer, a paperless society. So I think we need to give every student that uh, knowledge. Um, to succeed in the world because everything's done on a cell phone or a computer I mean, 24 seven, right? I mean, my phone's, my phone's attached to me 24 seven, it goes off and that's, I mean, pretty much how I survive for work. So any knowledge we can give them with technology and supply them that is uh, great for the future. Thank you. All right. Working effectively with other board members and the superintendent requires skills in communication and decision making. How do you see yourself working with other members of the leadership team and what is your vision for education in this community? So working together, right? Um, you know, everybody may seven people on the board when it's uh, full. So you're gonna have, you could have seven different opinions, right? So you have to have those conversations. Um, you know, in my world, I, I live by kind of three words: adapt, overcome, and improvise. So you spend those three words around you, and I, I I go by that all the time, right? And it's working together. It's a seven people adapting to what we need to do and making a decision that's best for everybody again not just me personally or somebody else personally that wants a decision made a certain way and then the last part was the future. what is your vision for education in this community again i think just uh, making sure our students have every opportunity to succeed uh, have all the classes that uh, need to be um, out there for them, as, such as like going off examples. Just as I heard art and Spanish. If we don't have those, I think those are good classes. Bilingual is a huge asset to people in the real world. 
Um, and then just teaching those basic work or real life uh, skills of being on time and respect respecting others, not just adults, other your peers and uh, adults. Okay. Um, how do you view the relationship between the Board of Education and the administration and staff? Is that like, how do I see it now or how do I want to, how would I like to see it? Give us both. <laughs> okay. Um, obviously I don't know what it's really, what this current board's uh, relationship with the staff is. Um, you know, you hear things off and on. So I think it's just, you need to, the board needs to work with the administration um, and the staff, hear what they do and try to lay out. And I mean, you're never gonna make anybody ha or everybody happy at one time. So again, it's going to that majority, making those tough decisions and uh, laying out the, the best possible scenario for the district to succeed and giving them their policy and procedures to make that happen. This one's a little long. <laughs> Identify or can you identify a recent board decision that you felt strongly about and describe how you would balance community concerns, student needs, state and federal law, staff considerations, and your personal values and beliefs to determine how to vote on the issue? To be honest, I don't really have a good answer or example for that one, so I um, apologize for that. I don't, I, haven't, I don't know what the big decision's been recently, so. Okay. Awesome. So thank you so much. Um, we'll be in touch with you uh, later this evening. Okay. You're welcome to stick around. Um, we do have another candidate to interview yep. and our request is, you know, to allow them to do that without yep. being present. Yep. Um, is there like a phone number that you would want me to reach you at? It might be being recorded right now. Yeah. Oh, I can, I'll just hang out out in the hallway. Okay. So. All, right. All right. Sounds good. Works. Awesome. Yep. And we'll let you know when you come in to do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, she is. Okay. I'll come and get her. We'll read her. Hi, Rachel. Hello. Welcome. I know you've been through this process before, but I still want to thank you for your continuing interest to serve the board and um, just welcome you here tonight. And thank you. we're just going to, the, the board didn't do, you know, we presented questions, but they're not in any certain order or read by like somebody might be reading mine or whatever. So. And we're going to start with Brad and go this way. Okay. Hi there. Thanks Hi. for being here tonight. My question is, what contributions can you make to Penfield Schools? Um, I think over the course of my life, I went to school here. Um, I started volunteering at 18 years old through Junior Achievement, and it's kind of grown from there, um, along with knowing kind of the inside inside the classrooms whether it was my child's classroom or not or my child's school or not um, I've gotten to know and have relationships with the staff the students um, I've helped coach girls on the run um, also I think that um, I've had family that has worked for the school district for many years so I've gotten to know many different facets and I think that's important to be you know, invested in the district just as a parent in general. 
Thank you. Hello. Hi. Uh, how do you feel the school district can improve the academic achievement of students and the professional development of staff? I think for me on the outside, it seems like we put such an emphasis on sports that being more transparent on what we are doing for academics, whether it be you know offering scholarships or you know things like that, um, professional development for for teachers. You know, I I think that um, I mean honestly, I'm kind of stumped on that one because I I know our our staff always is is learning and trying to to do new things to you know support our students. I'm kind of stumped, to be honest. That's all right. We'll just Thank go you. to the next. Um, what are the challenges facing our district, you feel? I think public perception is a big one. Um, trying to get school of choice um, to come back to our district is, is huge. Um, I think getting parents involved um, so that they're not just seeing that public perception, but maybe they're stepping up to add positivity to our district. Um, I think showing them the, the things that, that the district has to offer as far as volunteer opportunities, you know, is, is huge, getting them involved in, in things and, and helping our, our students. Rachel, if you were faced with a tough issue as a board member, such as raising taxes, cutting staff and programs, what kind of data would you need to help you make your decision? Obviously cost, but also the risk of not having certain positions if, if we were looking at making cuts, seeing what you know that position has done for the district and for students and seeing the importance in that. And to see also if there are other ways that other roles could be used to fill that, that void if cuts were made. Thank you. Welcome. Um, what do you think are the most important skills for students to have when they graduate? I think communication and real life skills as far as just day to day things like learning how to balance a checkbook and finances and um, you know, knowing how to do things independently, just in general around home and everything is super important. Um, I think socialization, in my job I'm um, over training and I'm noticing that a lot of the, the new hires that we have are so into technology that they're afraid of that face-to-face -face interaction and I think just allowing students to have more of that and understanding that things can be uncomfortable at times is, is very important because they're wanting to hide behind a screen rather than face those things head on. Thanks for being here. Uh, what would you like to see changed in the district and how do you envision your role in that change? I think showcasing the positivity that we do have and making that greater. Um, I think it's done more through actual work than sitting in meetings. I think we have to go out and talk with people and see the things that they want to see changed. Um, you know, meetings are great, but at the end of the day, you kind of have to sometimes knock on doors and talk with people and, and do those things to, to make change. And um, that's something that, you know, I've, I've been on different boards over the last few years and that's what we had to do in order to, to get people's opinions and, and to make the changes that were needed. Okay, as a board member, you'll be asked to make decisions where you must put aside what's best for you, your family, your friends, and your school to do what's best for the students and district. What does this mean to you? 
you have to take emotion out of it. Um, as hard as that is, because like you said, it is our, our kids. Um, you have to kind of look at it, how it affects everyone, even when you really don't want to. What are your beliefs about the use of technology in education? I think it's very important because the world obviously is moving toward that. But again, as I said prior, I think that there has to be a balance there. I, I think it's it's an important tool, but I, I still think that um, you know we we still have to know the old-fashioned way to do things because technology does fail at times. So. Working effectively with other board members and the superintendent requires skills in communication and decision making. How do you see yourself working with other members of the leadership team and what is your vision for education in this community? I feel that I'm very good at working with a team. Um, in my job, I am part of a leadership team there um, and have to work very closely with people and of course there are varying opinions and everything and sometimes you have to make compromises um, and the second part I apologize it's I don't know it's kind of weird it's not exactly connected but what is your vision for education in this community to take what we have and make it better um, to make it you know to make Penfield a place that people look at our academics alone and say that that's a place that they would want to send their child. How do you view the relationship between the Board of Education and the administration staff? What is my opinion of it? Or how do you view it? Um, I guess I'm going to answer this two ways just to be sure that I, I get the question properly. I would hope that there would be a very close kind of trusting relationship there, but I understand that there have been some circumstances where it has been strained. Um, I, would, I would want a relationship that is transparent, as transparent as could be. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, can you identify a recent board decision that you felt strongly about and describe how you would balance community concerns, student needs, state and federal law, staff considerations, and your personal values and beliefs to determine how to vote on the issue? One that comes up every few years um, that I feel very strongly about is transportation. Um, I had a brother that was special needs and used the transportation department and of course that's always one of the things that's talked about because of grants and such and possible outsourcing of that um, and each time it's been decided not to do that and I think it's you know, for me, that's a good thing. I like that our, our people are invested in our community. Many of them have children here, have had children that go here. Um, I apologize, that was a lot. Can you? No worries. <laughs> um, so identify a board decision mm -hmm. that you felt strongly about and then describe how you would balance all the outside things with your own personal okay. values. So because that one was such a big one for me, um, on many stretch at the last time that this went through, my mom was the head of transportation. I had my brother that used the services um, in the past, but I also understand budget, and I understand that, you know, things, if, if it's better, you know, fiscally, it has to be done, but um, I think in that instance, um, you know, because it went the way I want, I mean, I, I went well, but had it gone another way, I understand that money is part of 
what the board is about and you know we have to save money where we can too. Well, thank you very much for being here tonight. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Lemmer will be reaching out. So yeah, so if you want to um, stick around, uh, the board will take action on appointing a board member or I can call you later if you need to get out of here right away. Um, but it's is the next item on the agenda is to, okay. to do that. Around. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Does everyone have their e email available? Mm -hmm. Hey, Don. Mm -hmm. Can you explain the sign a number? So we don't say that. I was um, sitting on the office. Just, so just, so just so we don't use their name. Okay. Yeah. We'll go by a number. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I'm just sending them an email to assign a number for the candidate. So I don't have to use the name. Okay. Everyone just let me know when you get that. Give just a couple minutes for everyone to review their questionnaire sheets. I'll just do like a minute or two. Since there's only two, should we go with a motion and then have discussion or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there a motion for one of the candidates we interviewed today to fill the vacancy for Dana Wells Jenny? So moved. Support. We have to make yeah. a motion Ooh, of one of the want. candidates. Oh, one or two. Okay. <laughs> this, this is going to get because then we're going to have to amend it depending um yeah so was, i i if we're gonna do it that way i motion for 
number two to fill the vacant seat. And then you need a second. Second. Discussion? I think number two brought a, a different skill set that I, I'm not sure if any of us actually have, you know, part, part of that skill set that that person has, you know, just a whole different look. As the board, I think they were both outstanding. You know, I'd be happy with both of them, either one on the board, but. Yeah, I'm gonna say that too. I, I'm right with you. I think both of these candidates have a lot they could bring, um, but I'm in agreement with you that that candidate has a different skill set that we don't have not only on the board, but not in our district. So mm -hmm. um, when we had incidents at the beginning of this school year, um, like this was the person I thought of that could help us out. <laughs> Well, and, and with that too, you know, looking at the traditional role of the board, you know, if we're at the 50,000 mark looking down steering, I think that person would also have the ability to say, hey, this is what I think, this is my knowledge, but at the same time step back and, and not look to run things personally. Yeah, I would agree with, I would agree with that mm -hmm. assessment. But also, the questions were answered very well by candidate number one. Absolutely. And some of the questions, in my opinion, were answered a little bit better. So it's a very tough decision because I agree with Tim that these are two very worthy candidates. And yeah, I think we'd, I, be, we'd be well served uh, with either one of them. I assigned points out of three for each question, and candidate one to get more points based on how much they answered. <laughs> like that. I also like how involved they are already in the community, so rebuilding that relationship would be very helpful too. I, I, I agree with that. I, I kind of see that last, so it's a double-edged sword. You know what I mean? Because yeah, sometimes it's like, it's, <laughs> when, when you're out there doing it, it's tough to say, okay, well, I can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I gotta let the, the process happen. Jen, I, I agree with him. Um, I like that there's a different perspective that most of us don't have. So I'd be curious to see what where he sees or where the candidate sees uh sees issues that we could be better with. Yeah. Okay, Sarah, would you like to move forward? Well, so we... There's a motion on the table. Yep, there's a second. motion. There's and a motion. Second for number two already. For number two. Do I have a second? I second. Thing. Yeah, okay. John said second. And then we would take a roll call vote. Okay, it's got to be roll call. All right. Brad Crandall. Yes. Don Fortin? Yes. Sarah Jones? Yes. Crystal Newman? Yes. Jennifer Sheldon? Yes. Tim Wood? Yes. Thank you. Um, so we will be filling that seat with Mr. Steve Herbstra. Moving on to um, number seven, presentation and discussion. 7.1, approved proposed budget for the 23-24 school year. It is recommended to the board to approve the proposed school budget for the 23-24 school year as presented by Ms. Angina Schwartz, Director of Finance and Operations during the annual school budget hearing. Is there a motion to to approve the proposed budget for the 23-24 school year. So moved. Support. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. 
7.2 approve the L4029 for 2023. Director of Finance and Operations Angina Schwartz is requesting your approval for the L4029 for 2023, which is a tax rate request. This year's L4029 reflects no change from last year. 18 mills operating and 10.6 mills debt. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. 7.3. Approve the end of the year 2022-23 school year budget amendment. Ms. Angina Schwartz, Director of Finance and Operations, will present the end of the year amended budget. It is recommended that the board approve the amended end of the year budget as presented. What I have on the screen, what you've seen um, previous, is the revision, the final revision for the 22-23 school year. So, with this budget, what we, um, what I try to do is bring our expenses as close as possible without um, the sections going over budget. And for the board members that haven't been through this before, and they're uh, just a refresher for the board members that have. There, um, by these sections um, in this budget, in this summary, that if there was a section that's over budget at the end of the year when we have the final audit, then that is something that would be noted in our audit. So technically, it's um, not within the state statute in order to overspend a category like that. So while I say these are brought down as close as possible, there is still a little bit of cushion room in some of the categories that we're still um, moving on. This budget's been done for about a week and a half. So we had about the month of June or so that was still going on and we were still operating. And just having if anything unforeseen has happened or just we have a lot of work like maintenance does a lot of work in the summer you know that's ramping up and stuff like that so allowing um, some dollars in there for that so saying that there will be this will come in um, different at the end of the year um, than what I'm presenting today but this is a very close um, budget for that with that being said I'm bringing this budget to you and I'm going to the last, the bottom of the summary first and it shows a deficit of $126,919 and you'll see that we went from 
the previous revision of a $460,691 deficit. So we're doing um, a lot better than what was proposed mid-year, which is really good. Um, some of those um, highlights um, on that budget are um, there was a um, grant, the revenue was increased by about $1.14 million and grants were increased by a, mil, a little over a million. So you'll see most of that increase in the revenue was due to grants. There was one major, um, I'll say it's a grant, it's not really a grant, but I put it in that category because the revenue and the expenditures equal each other. But there was, it was called the 147C2, which is from money from the state that comes in to help with the retirement costs. So the state sends us this money on our state aid and then we automatically return it back out to ORS. But we have to bring it into our district, to our accounts, our finance system, and then expense that out. So with that, um, that was $1.2 million. So we received $1.2 million and then we sent it right back out the, the door. So that's kind of where you can see that fluctuation in those amounts um, when you're looking at that. Other than that, um, we received a little bit more, like $56,000 more um, in state aid than what was projected mid-year, so that's all, um, very good. On the expense side, you'll see we're down in expenses by almost $800,000. Um, a lot of that is due to um, um, capital projects the um, grant funds as those get. So when I do the mid-year, then those grant funds are kind of put in like if we were spending all the grant funds that year, the ins and outs. Well, as the year goes on and we see that they're not gonna be expended yet because most of them have like a September 30th end date. And some even have out to future years, 20, you know, 2024 and stuff like that. So as we get closer, we see like, oh, those projects maybe really aren't all gonna happen by June 30th then I'll adjust those grants. So you'll see that's where, where those amounts are um, adjusted. So I just a high level looking at um, those. Some of the other um, big sections are um, transportation and maintenance. Those tend to be a higher cost categories for us. Just um, not knowing really what we're going to have happen for the year. This year, in um, particular, we had some boiler issues. I think um, every morning, Stephanie and I were hoping we weren't gonna get a call that morning and when we had the boilers on, but um, definitely looking forward to next year and having new boilers in the district will definitely help that, but we've had some costs there. Um, transportation, same thing. We um, bumped those up at the beginning of the year in mid-year on hopes of what is going to happen and then adjust those back down, you know, towards the end of the year. Um, does anybody have any questions specifically on a category that they would like some information on? Mine's just a curiosity thing. What's uh, community services? We had none in 2120 yeah, and then we got Community services? Yeah, I'm so just curious what, what it is. <laughs> Yeah. It's because there's nothing yeah. and then now there's something. So I was yeah. like, so is? that was, um, that ran, when we ran our before and after school care program, okay. that's what would run through there. And now um, what that is is we did some work on that as far as doing some licensing and some things to get that. We're trying to go through the licensing process to see about restarting that program. So there's been just very minimal costs. So awesome. in that category to to do that and then the also um the auditorium i believe the auditorium is in there too so minimal cost like if there's something that in the auditorium that's used not it for the school mm -hmm. day good question yeah any other questions and that's the general fund i have other funds yeah so I'll just is are you okay if i just Move through those? Sure. Okay. <laughs> the other ones are numbers. will be a lot, a lot quicker here. Okay. 
So then I have the food service fund, which is another one. We kind of talked about that in the budget hearing. Um, but this um, fund, I'm projecting that we're going to have an $86,779 deficit um, for that fund. Again, we did um, some capital improvements. We purchased stuff for the cafeterias and stuff. And you'll see that drops this fund balance to $475,149. And that too is within the three month um, operating expenditure for the year. So hopefully with all things being said, we will not be on a spend down plan for next year, but we'll just have to keep a uh, good eye on that and make sure that we're um, still moving in that, in that direction. This is the student service fund. So this is the um, fund where the fundraising happens. So this would be the classroom accounts, the high school, the class accounts, there's athletic accounts, drama, club, the clubs, and all that kind of stuff to have money in here. So this is the money that we've taken in and the expenditures going out. You'll see right now I'm projecting just a little over $3,000 um, deficit in that but again that's not overspent the clubs and groups can only spend what they have so that's that's monitored in that and you'll see that it still has a fund balance of $205,011. And then the scholarship fund um, as we talked previously we took in $9,464 this year so that's that figure and we um, I think currently we've spent out like 7,000. I'd put it at 1,000 if we were to get one a reimbursement in in the month of June. I would have it in that budget to still send out. But there are still many um, scholarships that are still out there that we're waiting to pay if, in fact, they do get turned in for that. This shows a fund balance of $43,191. And then I, one thing I didn't address on the general fund, I just wanted to go back to, skip right over, the fund balance. So with this budget revision, um, I'm projecting a $6.3 million fund balance at the end of the year, which would be that at 22.9% of the expenditures. It shows that unassigned fund balance of almost 4.5 million at that 16.28, which is right at that sweet spot where we wanted to to keep that, to keep us from borrowing and just making sure that we are fiscally responsible dur during those times. So that's one thing I just didn't mention. And unless anybody has any questions about any of those budgets, that is all I have for you tonight. Thank you so much. <coughs> Is there a motion to approve the school year budget amendment? So moved. Support. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. 7.4, approve administrative contracts for the 12 month employees. It is recommendation of Superintendent Lemmer that the board approve the contracts for the following 12 month employees. Stephanie Lemmer, Superintendent, and Gina Schwartz, Director of Finance and Operations. Trevor DeVau, Director of Elementary Education and Student Services. April Yates, Director of Communications and Innovation. Andrew Loy, High School Principal. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve those contracts. Thank you, Sarah. Second. Tim? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion's been passed. 7.5, approve mechanical contractor for bond work. Student, Superintendent Limmer is recommending the Board of Education approve the recommendation of Triangle Associates for bid package three, which includes mechanical 
project at the middle school. The contracts would be awarded to Schweitzer for steel work and Plume for mechanical work. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you, Sarah. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Any board comments tonight? I'd like to thank Ms. Benson for her comments. It was, uh, you know, your comments were clear, they were constructive. So thank you for coming out. I want to thank both the candidates that were came and showed interest tonight. They both um, have a lot of interest in the district and are vested here, and I appreciated both of them, and it was a tough decision tonight. So um, I thank them for both being involved and look forward to seeing them in the future. Absolutely. Um, I'd like to thank Angina and Stephanie and our board for working together to approve our budget. Um, many hours put into that, and it's very appreciated that we can stay in healthy grounds there. Also, um, to all of our contractors working to complete these projects over the summer, the heat has been high and finally got some rain. Thank God for that. Um, also, the people working in our summer programs and the students that are being able to take advantage of those to stay on track, I just want to thank them for spending their summer investing in our students. Um, also, I'd like to congratulate Steve Herbstra. He's had interests not just this time, several other times so I appreciate him coming out and um, Rachel both to serve the board anything no I'm excited that we survived the rainstorm not gonna lie I might have a little trauma of doing a roof project and having bad weather come through in my <laughs> lifetime so um, everything we we've got the the, we batted down the hatches, I think is what it's called, and um, so we're very fortunate that we didn't have any um, big leaks or anything. The approach to work is going well, um, and uh, yeah, we're just full full steam ahead. We'll have um, uh, probably more information regarding the Dunlap mechanical here um, when we come back to meet in July at the organizational meeting. I'll adjourn this meeting at 5.58 p.m. Thank you for coming tonight. Oh, 6.58 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Five. It's far away. Your community.